Hi. Hello, hello, hello. Um, thanks so much for all of the comments from, from the last um, video that we did on the star seed. And uh, hopefully you got a chance to play around with the star seed energy. Uh, let me know if you have any questions around that. Uh, thanks for voting in our poll that's pinned at the top of the announcements to asking for this topic. Today we have um, the dreamland. And uh, just a reminder that all of these concepts, all of these archetypes and elements of living come from my experiences, come from, you know, literature and movies, uh, and also from, most importantly, the, a lot of downloads and information about them, especially because they're different than a lot of what we've been told in movies and in literature in our families and cultures, um, from my experiences with clients who have received the living and dying body process I created. And uh, we just finished our last class. Thank you, everyone that was in the class. So many doors that opened in that class. And uh, we have some updates on all of that that I'll do in a different video. Um, today with the Dreamland, uh, I love that many of you already said that you've been getting messages in dreams for a while. Or you've had different experiences with dreams. So Dreamland is a bunch of different things, just like any land, any world. It's not any one thing. <laughs> Um, you, we have many aspects of it that we can, that we can receive from, we can play with it. The idea of knowing about the elements of living and the archetypes of living and dying is so that we can actually use our awareness to this, use these energies to create phenomenal lives, use this as a tool so that we can have a lot more ease, a lot more clarity as to what's going to work for us, what's not, what's possible with other people or other spaces, places, and what is not really possible. And so we don't force, we don't use our energy just in wasting our time using our energy for, uh, with a certain person, with a certain place or, or a certain consideration without um, knowing what it's actually gonna create. So it makes it so that we actually get to be a lot more elegant with our time and our energy. We get to be a lot more um, judicious and picky but in a conscious way <laughs> um, about like what we're actually going to create or not, what, who we choose to connect with or not as well. So, um, you know, some of you mentioned in your comments that, that you've had nightmares and, and, and that that's been a struggle or that you've been, ha had this prophetic gift that has shown up in your dreams that you would know you'd get a message about something or someone before it happened. Um, and a big shout out to those of you who have had a lot of trauma with this, because just like with a lot of our gifts, there's often sometimes a more challenging side to it, especially if we haven't learned yet how to have ease with it, how to not be at the effect of the information that we get. You know, I find it, I'd rather have a gift than not have a gift. It's just a matter of using, of having the actual strategies for how to manage it, um, and for it to be a gift to myself and my body, and then also for the world. So um, with this one, it's tricky. It's it's a tricky one because you know how I have found it is actually through a lot of my work with kids and families. The kids that I've worked with have taught me a lot about what can really be possible with Dreamland. They're willing to let go of so many different of the fixed points of views about it. Um, as soon as we create a story. And, and the story is another element of living that it intersects a lot with dreamland. Um, when there's a, when you start creating a story around the dreams and around the nightmares, it gets more solid and solid, especially if you make it really significant. And then it's more likely for it to repeat over and over again versus like message received, got it. I don't need to have it on repeat, on replay over and over again. Or if you resist the story or you resist what the information that is showing up to you in dreamland, then that's when some of the other more problematic aspects of it can show up. So rewind a little bit. So dreamland is um, not just when you're asleep. Let's start with that. A lot of people think that you have to be asleep or unconscious to actually access this energy and access this. It's a platform really for creation, for connection and for um, receiving. 
And so what I have learned from my own personal experiences and from working with kids that are really, really gifted, that they're prodigies in how to use dreamland to their benefit is that if you actually acknowledge the messages you receive and you actually ask questions afterwards as to what to do with that information or not, it usually doesn't go and repeat and it usually doesn't create a, like a trauma story, a trauma response in your body. Your body is waiting for you to let it know what to do with that information or not. And we're not told this, you know, we're not told, we're not educated on how to do this. Um, and it was so great. Here I am showing up as a, as a speech language pathologist and learning behavioral therapist with these kids. And I absolutely got taught. I got schooled y'all. And it was, and these kids have been such a gift with this. Um, so, you know, for a lot of the kiddos, they would, they would tell me, yep, I dreamed it and I'm going to create it. Now I'm going to do it. And I'm like, okay, cool. And it was just this level of like, they would use dreamland and this aspects of be their waking or their sleeping hours to almost like vision boards or storyboards that they would be like, okay, this is what I'd like my life to be like. This is what I'd like to have. This is what I'd like to create. Okay, cool. And then they'd wake up, quote unquote, wake up and institute it in the world and like, or ask for it. They would just be like, I, I'd like this. And then it would show up and it would reinforce for them their agency that they were the creators of their lives, that they, that their ask and then verbalizing and declaring this is what I would like was really powerful. And so that's one of the things that is possible with Dreamland that I am super, super grateful for the kids that I've worked with, that they've brought that awareness in. And then if you actually use all of this information while you're doing verbal clearings, especially of like the living and dying body process, this also shows up a lot faster and easier. Um, another piece with the dreamland, like is receiving messages, not from your, not just from your own body and your own awareness, but also from past, present and future from the disembodied. Um, my grandfather is probably the, my most frequent visitor in dreamland. Uh, some of you have heard me say in other classes and calls, I didn't really get to see or talk with him. My maternal grandfather as much when he was alive, but after he died, after his body died, man, has he been, he visits me in my dreams. He tells me different messages. He, we connect, we've had more conversations. I feel like after he's passed away than we ever did before that. Um, including one time when he, when he told me a month ahead that my grandmother was going to be in the hospital around my birthday. And this was a couple of years ago. This was like 2016, 2017. And yeah, like right before I moved here to Savannah. And um, he was like, so, and don't tell your mom yet. You'll know when to tell her, but just so you know, your grandmother might join me at that time. And, it, and, it, and that's exactly what happened. And I just said, okay, anything else? Cause I was like half awake, half asleep, which is also kind of fun. Um, Cause that's why I'm saying it's like, it doesn't, you don't have to completely be asleep. You don't have to completely be awake. It can be in those in-between times or you can actually just choose to have dreamland in a conscious way, and I say conscious because you're gonna stay with your body, you're gonna choose it actually, instead of being like propelled into like a trance state or propelled and pushed into being out of your body, you're actually staying with your body the whole time when, when, it's, when you're using and activating the energies of dreamland effectively. Um, if you guys are here, I think that some people are listening, go ahead and let me know and say hi. Um, the other piece is, uh, so there's the disembodied that'll send you messages. There's past, present, and future that you can receive messages from. There are sometimes some of your fantastical creature crew, your spirit guides, your animal guides, they might find it easier for, to communicate with you in a dreamland than not. Um, and I wanna differentiate dreamland from a trance state, like I mentioned before, because a lot of people feel like drugs facilitate this and drugs are needed for this. A lot of people haven't accessed it without drugs, but you don't actually have to have drugs and alcohol to activate and be consciously choose a dreamland state and use this to your advantage. So you can have it be where this is a form of connection. For some of you who are more isolated, who are feeling alone, you can actually ask for the dreamland energies to be activated in your body so that you can feel more connected to everything to other people more, to yourself more, to your future. It's like, hey, this kind of sucks right now, but I know something else is shifting. What's this future that's showing up? And 
let me tap into that energy. Okay, hi. And then these images, these, these different senses, the smells, the taste, the sounds of it can start showing up because for each of us, it's a little bit different. You know, some of us just know I dreamt something, but I'm not sure what it was, right? But you have the energy of it. There's still just this like residual something there. Some of us are very vivid dreamers. Like my grandmother is amazing gift with like, she'll remember every detail of her dreams and what was going on there. And she gets all this information from her dreams. She can, she wakes up in the morning and over breakfast, she'll tell her, the, tell you the whole story. Again, how the story and the dreamland archetypes intersect. Um, one of the things only in the last 10 years with her have we really started to play with was her actually acknowledging all of the messages that she's really getting in there. Just like what we're doing with the messages from books community and all the, our discussions in that is that there are the messages that are like this superficial level, like, oh, these are the words, it's what, who was there, what's going on. And then there's this other stuff underneath that is waiting for you to ask for it to show up, for ask for it to contribute to you. And um, I think that that can be really, really powerful when it's, when it's actually acknowledged that that's something that you can do. If you're like, nope, that's not, that's a thing, that's too woo-woo, that's too, that's not me, everybody else can do it but me, or CDs can do it but nobody else, you know, or like this whole thing, like then absolutely that you're not going to be able to tap into it. But if you're willing to kind of play with this a little bit and, and, and see what is possible with it, I it's, it can be really amazing. Like I had a friend who I've had actually a couple friends, but I'm thinking of one person in particular recently who lost their mom at a very young age, you know, let's say like 10 or 12 or something like that. And I was talking with him and I was like, well, have you considered asking your mom to visit you in your dreams? And every time I've, I've suggested this to people, they're kind of like, huh, I haven't before all the ways that they can't do it show up to stop them. All these like, you know, toxic thoughts and like the blocks start coming up. But at first he was like, oh my gosh, I think I'm going to try that. That would be really nice because I'd really love to give her a hug or I'd really love to just hear her voice again or, you know, see what that would look like. And for each of us, it'd be really different. But that's one of the things that comfort me when I actually look at people in transition or the who have died or who are about to die is I know that I'll be able to connect with them in my dreams and in many other ways, if I so choose, I can call upon them. I can, and there are a lot of our people that don't have bodies anymore are waiting for us to ask for this. They're just waiting in the wings for us to be like, hey, could you visit me? Hey, can we talk? But since we've been told that that's not possible, it's, it's like we don't even hear them. We can't receive those messages at all. Um, and I think that it'd be really beautiful to stay connected and continue those conversations, but that's just me. Um, with, the, with the nightmares piece, some of you mentioned some things about the nightmare. So we talked about if we don't actually resist the messages. Hi, Diana, te veo. Yeah, hi, thank you for saying hi. Um, <clears throat> if we don't resist the messages, it also doesn't repeat and, and keep going. And then the other, and there's a lot of different ways of acknowledging, okay, message received, but there's also this place of really being in your power and, and being very firm with the message and with dreamland and being like, I got it, like, stop, <laughs> I'm done. Versus like, oh, could you stop? Oh my God, this is so horrible. And going into like a place of like, you're asking for permission for it to end instead of like, got it, done. Like, mm-hmm. Okay, and then what do I do with this information? Who is this information really for? Is there anything for me to do about it? Because sometimes just because you're aware of something doesn't mean it's actually anything for you to do about it. There's nothing there. It's just for you to be like, all right, I happen to get this information. Or maybe is now the time? Is it later? That kind of thing. Um, and then the other piece with nightmares too, is sometimes for us, dreamland, remember we talked about we're accessing past, present, and future. For many of the kiddos I've worked with, this is another aha moment that I had with my kids, is that many of them, they're actually remembering, and many of us, we're remembering our, our, our past lives, and they're showing up as dreams. And so where they're super visit, vivid, they're like, we're, you know, we're in a castle, and we're, we're being slaughtered because there's a battle, or like, um, we're being hanged or 
we're the one that's torturing somebody else. And then we feel really bad about it when we wake up. I'm like, oh my God, why did I do torturing this person? Or we were in debtor's prison and we're picturing all these different things and we're, we're recalling something. Not fun, horrible for some of us. And we think that that is a nightmare. And we actually, by calling it a nightmare or a night terror, we're not acknowledging what's the truth of it so that we can actually let it dissipate out of our bodies, out of our reality, so that we're not having those considerations, those points of views that that the vows around it, the promises, all that sludge and ugh around it still in our world. And so for my kiddos, and especially I've been learning to be like, oh, is that actually now or did that happen before? And they're like, oh, it happened before. Like I've had three-year-olds. They're like, oh yeah, that's not now. That was from before. And I was like, okay, is there anything we have to do with that? Like, do you want to like finish that story? Is there anything you need to do? And they're like, oh, well, let's finish it this way. And they'll actually incorporate it into our speech and language sessions. Or we'll just like say, okay, then I'm going to close the door to the castle and I'm going to walk away on my horse. And I'm going to like, do, they'll like, say this whole thing. And it's just like, they they close the door to it, which is part of what the door opener element of living is about. It's not just about opening doors. It's also about consciously closing the doors to the things that aren't relevant, that aren't helpful, that aren't creating more for us now. And these kids will open and close doors with ease, like boop, 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 no problem. <laughs> it's super, super cool. And so if you have grandkids, if you have young kids, or if you have issues with sleep, and you're having all these things go in your head, some of these questions are things for you to play around with that I invite you to play with. So you can have more re restful, rejuvenating sleep so that when you wake up, you feel more at ease. And it's interesting because in preparation for this call today, man, did I not get great sleep? <laughs> because it wasn't my stuff. It was everyone else's messages, everyone else's information around dreamland that was showing up, all the stuff that you all haven't acknowledged yet and recognized and been like, oh, this is what's true for me about it, was banging up against my world while I was trying to sleep. And I was like, whoa, this is a lot of information. Um, I'm good now. Now I've gotten a lot more energy from talking about it, from acknowledging it, from flowing energy and doing all these other tools. But I was like, wow, I wonder what's going to show up with this video. <laughs> because uh, a lot of us are recalling stuff from other realms and other dimensions and realities and other lives that if we just acknowledge the, the immensity of how much information we're getting and that it's actually, we can close the doors to them and not have it be something that is messing with us now, we could have a lot more ease. And that's what I would wish for all of us, for us to use this as a way to create better lives, greater lives, more fun. Um, so one of the things that I would love for all of us to play around with with this, if you'd like, is to do what I was saying, if, the, if that sleep stuff and the dream stuff is relevant to you where you're actually, it's actually affecting the quality of your sleep, ask the questions that I've mentioned. But for all of us, I'd love for us to actually use dreamland as like a blank canvas to envision and to, and to call up the energies. Because for some of us, it's not really about the pictures and the images. It's about having the energy show up and for us to know that it's here. Like, I'd like the energy of this to be my life. And we can use that in dreamland and start playing around with it, almost like a virtual reality. And then when we wake up, the first thing I ask is, okay, so what do I need to be or do to create this? What do I need to be or do to institute this in the world, to have this be more present here? And then I take action and I do what is required all day, every day with breaks, with pauses, because sometimes that's also what's required, a rest, you know, to have what you're asking for show up with ease, to not force it into being and to becoming, but to actually know the rhythm and when it's time, but not, but, but be willing to do what it takes. And for some of us, we love the dreamland so much that we get stuck in there and the visions and the, and the ideas, ah, and the hopes in all of this fantasy and we don't actually take conscious action. And then that's when I come in and I'm like, hey, let me kick your butt a little bit. Let's go, <laughs> let's do this. If that's something that you'd like to actually have versus just lip, you know, pondering about it and being in your head about it, okay? So let me know if you have any questions about this. Uh, love talking about Dreamland, love playing with Dreamland. Um, and, and I wonder how dreamland plays out with you. What are the other elements of living that are a factor 
a kind of flirt and play with dreamland when you are receiving these messages, when you are connecting with yourself and with others in dreamland, when you are creating with this element of living. And uh, post it below. I'd love to continue the conversation. And then we're going to have another video next week um, about one of the other elements of living. And so make sure to vote in our poll as to which is the next one you would like. Okay. Bye for now. Thank you.